All right, Thursday night. I would say every Thursday night, but we weren't doing it last Thursday night because I was in Vegas uh, drinking a little bit and gambling a little bit. But um, I have advice for you fellows on Vegas. This is Clemson baseball show, by the way, but we're talking about Vegas. Advice. If you plan to go to Vegas, don't go on Sweet 16 weekend. <laughs> Bigger than that. Check Taylor Swift's concert schedule. Oh no, that's the worst. That's probably the worst. <laughs> Friday and Saturday. I got. Friday. I got a little bit of experience there. I see. Yeah. <laughs> Friday and Saturday night, there were Swifties all over town. Our plane coming back was delayed because one of them left a piece of luggage in the airport and uh, threw the whole plane to 230 people while they looked for her Taylor Swift uh, merch. Anyway, uh -huh. we're, <laughs> we are here to talk Clemson baseball. Fellas, it's been two weeks since we talked. Tigers gone five and four in that time, um, beating the Colin of Charleston for the second time this year. They beat Winthrop, Kennesaw State, but they lost two ACC series, one to Duke and one to Georgia Tech last weekend. But the big thing is, just as we all predicted, Caden Grice is on a tear. Um, we're really good at that, right? We're putting him down <laughs> and saying how, you know, maybe he's going to be benched. And he's on a tear, JP, hitting the ball and pitching really well last Sunday in the one game the Tigers managed to beat Georgia Tech in. Yeah, he seems to have found his power stroke for sure. You know, he's got, what, four home runs in the last three or four games. So that, that was really one thing that had been lacking with him over these first few weeks. And at the end, he seems, when he's hitting the ball well, he seems to pitch better. So, you know, win-win there for the Tigers because he, he looked like, so far this year, he has looked like a different pitcher to me. I know he hasn't gone deep very often, but he has looked like a different guy under this new coaching staff on the pitching mound. We've talked about how they look like they're making the right moves with the pitchers, and, and, and uh, maybe that is part of it. Beef, what's your takeaway from Mr. Grice on a hot streak the last uh, week or so? I can't put my finger on it, but it feels like he looks way more comfortable at the plate. I, I don't know. I mean, guys that are pressing, you, you kind of look for some some characteristic of, of what they're doing, but he just looks comfortable, and he's swinging free and easy, and he's seeing, he's seeing everything. They're throwing, them, they're throwing sliders outside. They're throwing fastballs up. They're throwing all the pitches that – that they're looking at their scouting reports that are saying have beaten him in the past. And now he's, he's uh, stringing together a bunch of hits. I don't know. Maybe, he, maybe because he's pitching, he's just more free and easy at the plate. I, it's, it's been a nice little turnaround. I'm, I'm happy for the kid because he can carry a team for a couple weeks. He's been doing it. Like JP said, both pitching and batting. Now I, I uh, was so eager to talk about my trip to Vegas and Taylor Swift that I forgot to introduce the fellas. Next to me on my right, or is it left? One of my sides here is Casey the Beef Cregan, message board genius. Chopping Beef Show always makes me laugh. I send Casey a clip from his own show that makes me laugh <laughs> each week. And this week was about Casey driving a golf cart. I won't ruin it for anybody, but uh, check out the Chopping Beef. Uh, and Jason Priester, I buried the lead on him. He is live at Doug Kingsmore Stadium. Uh, getting ready to watch the Tigers and the Demon Deacons do battle. You can find his work at allclemsontigers.com. Uh, Will Taylor, scorching the ball, JP, batting 341. For several weeks now, we've talked about Cam Canarella uh, still having a struggle at 421 on the season. I think he's dropped a little bit in the last couple of weeks, you know, so maybe he can pick it up this weekend. Tigers are batting 291 as a team. That's not their issue. Their issue seems to be, for the most part, the starting pitching. Yeah. I think they, you know, still trying to find, well, maybe not necessarily in the starting pitching, but, you know, trying to find the right roles for some of these guys. And I think it'll help tremendously once they get Ryan Ammons back, who they hope to have back next weekend. Kind of a little bit of surprising when Eric back has said that when he does come back, he's going to go back to the bullpen. But, you know, to me, uh, I think the bullpen's been as big an issue as anything. You know, when they do get a lead, it's hard to hold them. Um, it just seems like 
you go back to that first, I think it was the first game against Georgia Tech. They got a lead in the bottom of the ninth inning. Bullpen's holding it, man, and they make an error in the outfield, let the time run score. It, it just seems like, you know, bad timing. Sometimes it's the bullpen, sometimes the starters. I mean, it, it's just a, a, it's just a combination of things right now. Beef? Yeah, I, I just, I do think it's a culmination of things. And, 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 and it, hold on, bud. And it absolutely uh, snow, snowballs. I couldn't even get my word in. My kids got me uh, all flustered here. But it snowballs. When things are going right, something else is going wrong. So I think this is going to be a decent year. I don't think that we're going to make a regional. But I think it's going to be a good year to figure out what Clemson has going forward. Obviously, you're going to lose guys next year, but I really, I, I'm kind of intrigued and excited about the future just based on some things I see. But it, you're right; they haven't put a full game plan together. I mean, it sounds like football here, where everything is going right. Really, maybe, maybe this week, maybe College of Charleston was was the was everything kind of felt right. But you know, hopefully, they'll put something together and sneak out a win this weekend at least. 16 to 10 on the season. Uh, what first two games looks like tomorrow will mark, mark the halfway point of the, the season. They got a, a, a big uh, challenge ahead this weekend. We'll get to that in a minute. But JP looks like Tristan Smith, uh, ERA 7.07, looks like he's lost his weekend starting job because uh, they announced uh, a TBA for Saturday's game. So, yeah, what's going on there? <laughs> It's going to be interesting to see what they do tomorrow. You know, I was a little surprised when I saw that. Well, actually, I was a little surprised when they ran him out Tuesday night in the inning of relief. I know he didn't have it Saturday. You know, I think he walked five guys in, in less than two innings. He, he just didn't have it. We st- we're talking about a kid that's a true freshman. He, he, he His stuff is electric. When he puts it all together, that's a kid that I think is going to be fine. But may- maybe it is better for him to maybe – iron out some kinks in the bullpen. Um, I could see maybe them moving Jackson Lindley, who's been mostly effective, man. He's been pretty good out of that bullpen, you know, maybe moving him into the rotation. I, I'm kind of interested to see who, who they're going to run out there tomorrow. Uh, yeah, and by the way, I misspoke again. The game is Thursday, so tomorrow on Friday will be the midpoint of the season 28th game. I did the same thing with JP. I was asking him if he was going to be available, and he said – I'll try and jump on from the park. And I was like, oh, crap. <laughs> Has anybody figured uh, yeah, out yeah. Park is Thursday, Friday, Saturday yet? <laughs> you, are not, you are not the only one that cannot get used to this weekend being Thursday, Friday, Saturday. And I did find out why. It's because the night's game is TV. The night's game is on the ACC Network, not ACC Network Extra. Well, they it. do do it, it at, at the end of the, towards the end of the season when school's out. They tend to move the games to Thursday, Friday, Saturday, too. But the way you always talk about it, it's always the Friday night starter, Saturday night yeah. starter, Sunday night starter. I mean, that's just I, the lexicon, right? I actually, it is for me. I actually got that right because Nelson asked me earlier today, and I said, "I don't know. I'm guessing it's TV because one of the I noticed I didn't realize it was today, but I knew one of them was on uh, the ACC network." Okay, uh, Austin Gordon tonight, JP against a Wake Forest team that has, uh, I think they're batting 310 as a team. Casey will get into this in a minute, but batting 310 as a team, 51 home runs. Uh, and 60 doubles in 26 games or 23 and three. Austin Gordon, as we said, TBA and Grice on Sunday. What do you think? Yeah. First? They are not ranked number two by some sort of fluke. This is a very good baseball team, top to bottom. Um, you start, you're sitting there talking about. They're impressive numbers at the plate, but, but what really stands out to me is when you start digging into those starting pitchers. All three of them, ERA under two, and you'll be hard-pressed to find a better pitcher in the country than this guy Clemson is going to face tonight, Rhett Louder. Every week when I get my ACC player of the week or pitcher of the week ballot, man, it seems like this guy's name's on it. He's got an ERA of 1.42. He struck out. 46 batters and 38 innings, and he's only walked seven guys. Clips has definitely got their work cut out for them this weekend, man. This is a very impressive Wake Forest baseball team. 212 team ERA. Again, I'm stealing a little bit of Casey's Thunder, I think. That's here. good. But he's dug into it. I just had five minutes today in between 173 meetings, I think it was. 
Um, so, uh, Beef, tell us about Wake Forest and what you know about the Demon Deacons besides scary hitters. Scary. Hitters. scary <laughs> well, hitters. there's some holes. There's some holes I'm noticing. Anyway, 23 and 3, 7 and 2 in the ACC. Like JP said, ranked as high as number two in the country. There's about 37 different uh, publications that put out a ranking system, but this one is by Baseball America, has them at number two. Again, tonight, Rhett Loudon, he is the tw- 2022. ACC pitcher of the year but last year I don't know if you guys remember this he lost a one nothing game he was he was um I wouldn't say outdueled but he he lost he didn't lose the game they lost one nothing he still had eight innings pitched gave up three hits 11 strikeouts no earned runs and a no decision he is 5-0 1.42 48 strikeouts 38 innings pitched and opponents are hitting 185 against him on Friday night they go with Sean Sullivan Four and one, one point seven six. He's a left-handed pitcher. Fifty-eight strikeouts in thirty innings, and he give, he's uh, given up one point two or point uh, one two four batting average to opponents. And then Saturday is Josh Hartle. He's another lefty going up against Caden Grice. Five and one, one point eight zero ERA. Fifty-six strikeouts, thirty-five innings pitched, and opponents are hitting two nineteen against them. And, I mean, it's just um, I keep laughing in my voice here because it's just a comedy of, of wealth there that they run out there. Like Marty said, 2.12 ERA, 333 strikeouts across the whole uh, pitching staff. But then we get to the to the lineup. I did say there's some holes, but not at the top of the lineup, not in the first five, at least first five players. They have Tommy Hawk, who's hitting 436, 1.121 OPS. Uh, J- Justin Johnson, Nick Kurtz has nine home runs. Justin Johnson has nine home runs. These are kids, too. One, Nick Kurtz is a sophomore. Brock Wilkin is third in a country, tied for third in the country in home runs with 14. He's got like a 1.29 OPS. This team is good stocked, one, one through nine, although that 7.89, they run out different guys, but Danny Corona probably 259 batting average. Gio Cueto, 238. Marek Marek Houston, 227. Again, young kids, freshmen and, so- freshmen and sophomores. There is some holes at the bottom, but you better make sure that you get those three outs because the other six guys aren't, aren't, aren't very easy to get out. This is a really good baseball team. I'm looking forward to watching them. So they're eighth in the RPI, uh, and our friend South Carolina, I think, is second or third. But So what you're saying about Wake Forest is – Really good pitching, really good batting. How's your fielding, Beef? You didn't mention any. I was looking for a hole. I don't somewhere. do that. I'm <laughs> trying to find a hole because uh, I saw one one prediction today from a guy who uh, bets on college baseball games, and he said he predicted under 12 and a half. And I was like, well, that's kind of interesting because, you know, Wake Forest is going to score. But he believes Wake Forest is going to score a lot and Clemson going to score a little uh, or none. So those statistics you pointed out, Beef, uh, you know, that could come to fruition. But we'll see, right? It's baseball. Anything can happen. Lowry got, you said, got beat last year in a one nothing game. Though I wouldn't be counting on a one to nothing game tonight. I think they're a little bit better shape. Two and four in the ACC, JP. We talked about this preseason. 16 to 10 overall. There's going to be ups and downs, and there certainly has been through the first 26 games. I still like where the team is from a long-term standpoint. We don't know if they're going to make the tournament this year or not. Probably not. The pitching doesn't appear to be there. But what's your take almost halfway through the season? Um, Yeah, I kind of agree with you. If if we're talking long-term, you got to like a lot of the pieces that you see, especially some of the young guys um, that that are going to be here the next few years, like Cam Cantarella. um, There's – Several freshman pitchers we talked about Tristan Smith, the Riley kids, really good. Ethan Darden seems to be coming into his own, the midweek starter. But there are several pieces of this team. If they could put it all together, it's like Eric back and said Tuesday night. This could be a dangerous team over the second half of the season if they could put some things together and get some guys back healthy. To me, that's one of the biggest things. Got to get a couple of these pitchers back healthy. Because even some of the guys we've seen throw, I don't think they're 100%. But um, if they could get some guys healthy and a couple bounces go their way and play a little bit better when the pressure's on at times, you know, they, they could be a dangerous team down the stretch. One of the toughest schedules in the nation, though. So we'll see. But 
overall, man, it, it's it's really hard not to like, you know, let's say the foundation that's in place. Beef, your team yeah, midway through the season. They're playing hard. I mean, you know, sometimes you just have to tip your cap and, and say, all right, we lost to a better team. Now, I know some of the names on the front of the jersey of some of the losses that Clemson's taken, you don't you don't really like to take. However, you got to understand that this, this is this is a work in progress. I didn't realize how bare the cupboard was, I guess, to uh, at least on the pitching side of things. But you are seeing complete – they are building off of it. Even, even when they're having bad outings in the bullpen, then they follow it up with a decent outing. So you're seeing things kind of progressing in the right direction. I, I definitely echo JP. It just – it feels like the foundation it, – it definitely feels like the foundation is there, and hopefully they can – build it with with some of these young kids and then even recruiting classes fo- to follow so um I, i'm not down on this squad at all yep i think that's kind of what where all three of us are right now the midway point of the season ups and downs wins and losses good games bad games um like you said there's a good foundation there canterell is going to be around for two and a half more years hopefully you know transfer portal who knows but the plan is the two and a half more years of him. Um, we'll see with some of the other guys. But uh, I like what they're building. We've talked about it before, JP. We've talked about looks like he's uh, Backage is making the right moves with the pitching staff. Um, I read some of your stuff where you said you think on the second game at, at uh, Georgia Tech was close for a while, and you think he ended up saving the pitching for Sunday's game, which worked out. Um, so – to me, he's still making those right moves, right? He's still doing the yeah. right things with staff. That, that's my that's my take, anyways. Um, that's just that's I was not, I didn't even watch that game that day. I was out of town with the wife at a at a work thing in Charleston last weekend, but I was watching who who kept pitching. You know, Tristan Smith was not very good to start the game. Clemson got in a deep hole early, and you just look at the guys that came in out of the pen, and it was some of the guys that haven't been quite a visit as effective. So, so to me, I just wondered if maybe they didn't, you know, kind of figuratively wave the white flag, so to speak, and, and say, hey, let's get them on Sunday. And that's exactly what they did. It worked out. You know, they, they, they had some guys that were still available Sunday, and Clemson was able to salvage the series finale there. But, yeah, I, I really like the way this pitching staff's been managed. I don't remember – if I've done it, it hadn't been more than once or twice thinking to myself, hey, man, this guy's been in way too long or, or you need to leave this guy. I mean, I, I haven't been thinking that to myself at all, and it was something that I often did, you know, in previous years. I was going to say, it seemed like a recurring theme under uh, the other uh, – the, the previous management. Beef, your take. It's all working out, though, isn't it? It's working out for Monty Lee, and it's working out for Clemson, too. So, um, yeah, I like this coaching staff. Let them work. That's what I say. Let them work. I think I think those pieces are right, too. Just hope that a head coaching job doesn't come open for one of these guys to leave. But that happens as well. Yeah. Uh, man, if you, if you look at some of these pictures, and you can't see the effect Jimmy Bellinger's had on them, man. You're not paying that close attention because there are several guys out there who are um, just – look completely different than they did coming into this, you know, prior to this season. And you look at a guy like Nick Hoffman, man, he is improving as the season goes on. He's getting better every time he comes out, it seems like. That's a big spot he was in Tuesday night in Columbia. You know, it was eight to three bases loaded, one out. And he strikes out two consecutive guys, man. You know, that, that was a big spot. I think we're seeing a difference in him. And I think we've seen a difference in Nick Clayton. We talked about Caden Grice on the mound earlier. I, I just think he has had a remarkable effect on this pitching staff, it, it's just not going to be a overnight fix. You know, it's going to take some time to get it all the way there. Well, here's the, here's another example. And I, I don't know why, but Reed Garris did not pitch last year, and he's been a key guy out of the bullpen this season, right? The guy didn't – all the troubles they had with pitching last year, he didn't throw a pitch. Now, maybe he was not ready. You know, I, who knows? Maybe he wasn't ready. But just goes to show you what a year of develop, what a, what a year of maturity and a and a pitching coach and development can do for a guy because he looks lights out most times out there on the on the mound. Oh yeah, man, and we're talking about a guy that throws it well into the nineties, yeah. and he didn't he didn't come out the dugout until late into the season when they needed an emergency catcher. You know that that is you know I'd like to know 
how that played out, you know. But again, you know, that's the woulda, coulda, shoulda game, and yeah. it is what it is. Beef, your take on Mr. Garris before we get up and out. Oh, of he's he's been great. What a breath of fresh air. You know, there's certain guys that come, when you see come in, you kind of feel comfortable with it. And I think, like JP said, it's been Clayton, it's been Hoffman, it's been Reed Garrison, it's just it, it's been uh, uh, oh God, uh, Jackson Lindley. So it's been guys like that that when you when you come in, you're like, all right, you, even in a tough spot, they're not gonna they're not gonna get multiple runs. Um, it just feels kind of good, but then there's other guys that you go like, "Oh God, come on, please have your good <laughs> stuff today," you know. But hopefully, everyone at one point, at some point, will be that guy that you can look and say, "All right, we got a shot here. Cut this down." I missed last weekend, so I didn't see any of the games last weekend. But my sense from the first 23 games was there wasn't a lot of like back to back to back walks like there was in the past, right? Again, they know when to go out there and talk to the guy. Bellinger knows when to go out there and talk to the guy and calm him down. Um, it just seems better managed. I, 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 you know, who knows? Maybe I ended up sixteen and forty-two or whatever. But it looks looks like they're better managed to me. Maybe that's wishful thinking. Maybe that's whatever. That's just the way I feel after twenty-six games, having seen most of the first twenty-three of them. Uh, Funny that you mentioned. Funny that you mentioned that, you know, when, when Smith had his bad outing last Saturday and walked up five guys in less than two innings, I don't think Bellinger was there that day. Uh, Coincidence? I don't think so, man. He, he's not there to go calm him down and talk to him. Yeah. Uh, you know, so. <laughs> J.P. Priester is live from Doug Kingsmore Stadium. Casey DeVee Creven. Creven? Cregan is live from the island. Creven Cregan, there's your new nickname. And I'm Marty Coleman. I'm live from Kyle, Texas. Okay. You can find Casey's work. He is a message board genius. Or is it genii? See, I don't even know how it, plural geniuses is genii. Casey works on the message board genius. Chopping beef and will make you laugh. I guarantee it. At some point during the show, if you don't laugh with him, you'll laugh at him. <laughs> Jason's work, all ClemsonTigers.com. Jason, big recruiting weekend for football before we get out of here. Yes, it is, man. Big recruiting weekend. Look on the website tomorrow. I'll have something for you on that. All right. All ClemsonTigers.com for Casey the Deep Green and Jason Priester of all ClemsonTigers.com. Marty Coleman, go Tigers. Go Tigers.